Clay is coming home on vacation. Home to Beverly Hills. Home to his two closest friends. All you have to do is relax. I'm going to pay you back. All you need to do is trust me. I don't want to trust you, Julian. I just want my 50K, all right? Home to the beautiful. You don't look happy. But do I look good? <laughs> and the out of control. in a lot of trouble. This cannot go on forever. You owe me a lot of cash. I, I don't know what to do, and you're the only one. What happens when you pay? I don't need a discussion on the finer points of morality. Spare me! He disappears, nobody knows where, and then he comes back like nothing ever happened. Live your life any way you want, but not here. What do you want? I'm looking for Julian. Are we having fun? Is that what we're doing? Let me know. It doesn't feel that way. You don't know what you're talking about what you're doing i know what julian is doing i am not like julian right, leave me alone what are you gonna do now you're gonna go back to rich you're gonna run and hide i really want to know what you're gonna do now i don't know julian everyone is accountable make me understand julian i really want to understand of course get to the hospital no! i'll handle it when you're young and rich in beverly hills the fun can last all night the night can last all day and the scars can last a lifetime, maybe a short lifetime. The controversial bestseller about the Beverly Hills rich kids is now a sensational new movie from 20th Century Fox. Andrew McCarthy, Robert Downey Jr., and Jamie Gertz. Less than zero. I go silent. It's because I muted my microphone because I was coughing. Are you still sick? You still sound a little, uh, a little congested. Just, sound a little congested. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's like coming back around. So I really, I, I hate it. Absolutely hate it. Dude, I'm so sorry. I it's terrible. Yeah, I know. I'm tired of being sick, man. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, you've been sick for like a month. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, the worst part of that is that it throws off the whole taste of taste of uh, your scotch too, right? Well, I, I hope not because it's right here <laughs> next to me. <laughs> well, you have to let me know how it, how yeah. it goes. We're, we're, we're field testing as we go through this. Cool. All right. All right. So I'm thinking because we, we have the idea of a shorter one first that we knock that out and then that way we can take our time with uh, John Candy. Oh, that's fine. If you want to do it that way, that was my thought process. Even though I think we're going to be posting, I mean, we're going to post John Candy first. Um, right. I just know that you know if we start kind of you know talking at length, you know, we could get to the end of it and go, eh, let's just do it next time. And okay. So the idea is not that I'm forcing one down your throats, just the you know it, it'll make that canned episode you know, happen. So it's definitely there. So, so which one are we doing? Are we doing Jamie Gertz or Curtis Armstrong? I was leaning towards uh, Jamie Gertz. That's the one I tweeted out earlier. Right on. Um, how do you guys both feel about that? I mean, I could go the other way though. Hmm. Rose, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. How do you feel about Jamie? Um, uh, not as strongly as Dave feels about her, but, um, she had her moments in the 80s, I have to admit. She's a fairly decent actress, so let's do her. I mean, let's, you know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's just because I'm always feeling that we're spending so much time on the guys. No, and, I know. Yeah. I know. And, and there's definitely a lot of great female actresses that need their due. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can, I can, I can uh, biggest. Sorry, mm. say again? No, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at her IMDb and just thinking she had like her biggest moments in the 90s. Well, Twister was huge for her. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not bad. laughs> no, actually, she did. I take that back. She did a lot of shit in the 90s. 
Oh, she had some stuff in the eighties. There's three yeah, and there's three. Forever. In the, okay. Let's do it. All right. Let's yeah. do Jamie Gertz. We're, 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 we're going for it. All right. Let me. I've got the IMDb up. I got recording. Recording happening. Good. All right. For the Romans, give me sight beyond sight. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready? Prepare for blast off. Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, This is 80s Reboot Overdrive Podcast. Is like so dated. Hey, this is 80s Reboot Overdrive, and I am your overlord, Dave. Online, I have got 80s music girl, Rose. Hey, what's up? What's up? Oh, that's the 90s. Never mind. <laughs> uh, and then we've got uh, 80s Auto Reverse, Scott. Hey, everybody. Great to be here again. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump right in. We're going to be talking about an 80s icon uh, that is a, uh, you know, it's something that we feel that we haven't spent a lot of time on or we don't give enough attention to is the female actresses. So I'm kind of forcing my co-host into this. And as I'm, well, I'll, I'll get to kind of a thought process around this after I get through the, uh, the filmography. But we're going to be talking about the 80s icon that is Miss Jamie Gertz. Uh, so in the 1980s, uh, in 1981, she did On the Right Track, 1981, Endless Love, uh, 1982 to 1983, she was in a TV series called Square Pegs, where she was Muffy Tepperman, love that name, mm. uh, 1983, she was Different Strokes, so she was in probably, what, like, one episode, mm-hmm. uh, TV movie in 83 again, uh, for members only. I'm sure that's not the jacket. Uh, yeah. All right, so 1984, TV series called Dreams. Uh, 1983 to 1984, she was in The Facts of Life as Boots St. Clair. So she's got a good run of uh, TV series where she has great names like Muffy and Boots. <laughs> uh, I was in a band called Muffy and Boots. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, it was a tribute to Twisted Sister. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Love that name. Uh, so 1984, she's in uh, Family Ties. Uh, 1984, she's in 16 Candles. Uh, 1984, she's in Alphabet City. 1985, she was in a movie called Mischief. 1986, Quick Silver. Uh, 1987, Lost Boys, which I think a lot of people haven't seen. Uh, it's a vampire movie. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, 1987, uh, another movie that we really don't spend that much time on called Less Than Zero. Uh, and then uh, 1989, she did three movies, Listen to Me, Silence Like Glass, and Renegades. Uh, what I alluded to before uh, is that this is Dave's attempt at trying to know his co-hosts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little prediction as to what is going to be their favorite 80s moment. And I'm completely okay if I'm off board, but I'm just seeing if I can guess. Um, so my guess for Rose that her favorite mo- moment is going to be less than zero. My guess for Scott is it's going to be a tie between... Uh, Crossroads and Lost Boys. So let's see if Dave is right. So, uh, Rose, you want to uh, give me your favorite 80s moment with Jamie Gertz? 
Jeez, I guess I could say. Well, let, 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 if I'm wrong, if I'm no, wrong, no, please. No, you're, you're not. Just, you wouldn't be the overlord if you were wrong here. Ooh, snap. All right, well then, good. Uh, <laughs> you know, I... You know what? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, before you even get started, what is your prediction that is going to be mine? I don't know. Come on. <laughs> Take a uh, guess. No, I, I can take a guess. That doesn't mean I'll be right. Okay, well, that's I fine, don't too. I not know you as well as you think I know you. Um, I'm just going to guess. It's probably going to be it's Dave, it's Dave, it's Dave. Hmm. Oh, it's too girly. Uh, um, I'm going to say something out of square pegs. Square pegs. Okay, what are you thinking, Scott? Quicksilver. Okay. Let's uh let's go through this and we'll see where we land. Uh go ahead, Russ. Uh so um less than zero, probably. One of my all time favorite movies only because, you know, it was so gritty and hardcore and it had some really hot guys in it. Um <laughs> just just crammed them all in there. It was great. Like Let's do this movie for all. Let's get James Spader, Robert Downey Jr., and Andrew McCarthy. Just stick them all in one movie. And they're like, okay. <laughs> we need a girl. Uh, let's see who can hold up to the caliber. Jamie Gertz, there you go. <laughs> um, I don't know. She just, you know, she just kind of blew me away. Um, I honestly saw Lost Boys. I don't know if that's possible. Yes, it is. Saw Lost Boys before I saw Less Than Zero. And I thought, Hmm. Well, now I don't really care for her character much in this one, because I never saw Square Peg. Never saw it. Um, not even reruns. To be honest with you, I I know it was on TV. Never watched it. Never really saw her in anything on TV. So when I first saw her, I saw her in Lost Boys. But then I saw her in Less Than Zero, and I thought, man. Okay, this can't be the same person. I mean, the caliber of acting that she brought, you know, to the table, to that film was just amazing. And just to be like the person that you wanted to hate, to the person that you feel bad for, and then the person that you ultimately are like, oh man, look at all the stuff you gotta go through. And then you wanted to hate her again. It was just like, that, we could have been sisters. I'm telling you, it's just like there's just so many emotions running through you when you watch it. At least for me, anyway. No, you know? I, I I know exactly and, what you're saying. It's like a roller coaster ride of love hater. Yeah, and the part where you know she's you know she's in this big relationship and then they go off to college and. You know, she comes back and then, you know, she ends up falling for, you know, guys yeah, haven't seen the movie yet. Spoiler alert, she falls for the best friend and then he comes in on him and she's just like, you know, she just like literally wanted to die, like right there. And you felt it and you're like, oh man, you were so busted. You fucker. And it, it was just, it was devastating all around for everybody. So it has a horrible scene in a movie too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like so poignant and then just so, uh, God, really. Cause stuff like that happens in her life. Yeah, like when he came back to visit her and he caught yeah. her and Julian. Yeah. And it was like, oh man, that hurt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, she really played the type of character that was, it seemed like she was afraid to be alone. And yeah. She, she did yeah, that she really neat. well. Yeah. Yeah. Just a really needy person. Right. Yeah. So. Good so. call, Dave. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of her in that because of the roller coaster ride that she gave us where mm-hmm. you were like, you know, I can, you know, I like her. I'm getting behind her. She's, you know, good for, um, Clay's character, but <laughs> then she does some jerky thing against him and then you're like, all right, well, I don't like her anymore. So yeah, yeah, and so she played that really well. Yeah, she did. I'm on board. I mean, I love her in that movie, and you know, we'll, we'll talk more about some of the other movies. But I, I, I had a crush on her in that era. She was very cute and attractive, and 
her character in Less Than Zero, I mean, let's face it, that was pretty, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty deep movie. So it, overall, every character in that movie was, uh, a pretty intense. So, um, it was, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. I, I'm, it's a good pick. I mean, it's, it's hard not to go wrong with Less Than Zero just on all three of, uh, all three of the main actors in that one, and Jamie Gertz was the best female role that you could pick. So, yeah, she did that. For that role. She did a great job on it. She did. She did. And like I said, believable. You know. Oh and, yeah, yeah, definitely. Her yeah. acting, like like Rose said, her acting seemed to be taken to another level, and she was really uh, convincing. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So I mean, even when she was being kind of a jerk, or she was being faithful or whatever you believed her you know and she's she sold you on the type of person that would just jump back and forth um you know between being uh you know faithful to you and oh if you've got to go and leave me then i'm going to be faithful to the person that's here so um whatever that's you know that type of person and that's what i got at you know her role in that one yeah. Yeah. So she did that really well. Yeah. All right. So uh, Scott, what's your pick? Well, you're you're absolutely right. Um, was it going to be a tie, or did you have one that was stronger I'm, than the I'm, other? I'm pretty torn between the two, but um, I I just kind of I'm I kind of leaning towards um, towards crossroads. I had a feeling that was going to edge out <laughs> the music. Yeah, it is the music. Yep. You know, I'm a, I'm a music geek, so I love I love the music side of it. And even though she did not play any instruments and she had no real, she didn't bring anything to the table musically in that movie. Uh, her character was very important in 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 the whole scheme of things, and and she played it well. You know, the kind of the runaway that that Ralph Macchio kind of connects with and, and then kind of screws him at one point and then comes back. You know, it, it was, I just, I think she did a good job of playing that role. And it's just one of my favorite movies from that, from that time. Uh, especially with the, the cast that they have in that. And then the music, like you said, the music is, uh, <laughs> uh, was a big factor in that one. So, um, that's, that's my pick. So, um, Rose, did you have, I don't remember if you had seen that one before or not. Um, I think I probably saw it briefly, uh, only because I was going through this Ralph Macchio phase. So <laughs> it was kind of like, do I want to watch this? You know, I had this even back then I had like a 15 minute you know, make it or break it kind of a um, thing that I live by. And so, like, if it, a movie didn't, if it didn't keep your interest for like 15 minutes, then you were done, right? Yep. I'm dying to wait to hear what you have to say about the Forbidden Zone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, It'll open up a whole new door. <laughs> yeah, let's we'll say that that's that's for another day. But I, I just that, that, that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be a great Christmas show. All right. So anyway, so uh, so keep your attention for 15 minutes. Did you watch the movie? Yeah, Dave. Did you watch the movie? Oh, you're talking to me. Oh, um, you? No, 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 no. You're no, on for, what? Uh, for, forget the Forbidden Zone. Let's just forget about that for now. I'm sorry, brother. That's the crossroads. <laughs> yeah. Did it last? Did you? Did it grab your attention for 15 or 20 minutes? Did you watch? It didn't. It? Sorry. Oh. So you, oh, yeah. so then you didn't even get to like the, you know the, the moment where they were doing the dueling guitars. Oh, Mm-mm. this was awesome. Huh? I know. Okay. And that's the only I part would I really remember. I probably go back and look at it, you know, and be like, oh, how come I never watched this movie? Because I've done that. I've been revisited things and gone, what was I thinking? I didn't watch this movie. But you know, I have to think about the maturity level I was at at the time, and whether I actually had time to sit down and watch a movie like that, you know with kids and everything because a lot of times I had to wait for them to go to bed you know right to even have any time for myself so 
it uh, probably never really came up again. The Crossroads thing, I, I I know I've seen the movie, and I remember bits and pieces of it, but I don't remember anything that Jamie did in it. Um, because, oh, you know, really? Yeah, because I'm just, you know, I remember the highlights, you know. I remember the uh, um, the the teacher, uh, you know, for Ralph Macchio. I remember him. Yeah, but, Willie Brown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe Seneca is the actor. Yeah, really great. I remember I remember him, and I remember the finale. You know where they were actually, you know, uh, doing the dueling uh, guitars. Don't uh, say banjos. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> you almost did. You almost devil went. I heard it on the tip of your tongue. Devil went down to Georgia. It was on my brain. So. Uh, that's wow, stuff. that's funny. You know, rosin you know, up your bow. You know who he played against, right? <laughs> was you know that? The, you know who the guitarist was that he played against, correct? No, I don't. No. Oh. Really, Steve Vai. <gasps> oh. And he tears it up in that movie. Tears mm-hmm. it. Seriously, uh, one of the most amazing guitar performances that I've seen. I mean, it's just incredible. Uh, and then also a nice little Joe Morton, who has been in many, many things. Uh, he was one of the assistants that plays towards the end of the movie also he kind of plays well they call him scratch but he's really the devil <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's scratch's assistant is his tech is his real name but it's uh if you look up joe morton you'll you'll recognize him right away you've seen him in a lot of things he was in terminator uh mm. three terminator two mm-hmm. anyway He's been around. He's been a lot of things. Uh, just overall, just, yeah. The ending of that movie is amazing. That dueling guitars, or dueling banjos, whatever you want to call it. But but you, what you're saying was Jamie in her role in it though. She really uh, she did no, well. She was a runaway. Right. She was a runaway, and she she hooks up with Ralph on the road. You know. As he's going to search, search out his uh, his dream of being a blues, a real blues guitarist, and because uh, he's trained as a classical guitarist and he wants to break away from that, and he and he he meets up with Jamie Gertz, who's like a a runaway thief basically, and she plays, you know, she does a good job of pulling it off. So that's yeah, I I just liked her in it. And, you know, she's cute. Again, cute in that movie and attractive. So I, I have a yeah, I actually prefer the word attractive for her. I don't think she's cute to me. It's like, you know, Punky Brewster. That's cute. <laughs> Jamie Gertz, she's, you know, okay. she's I, I, know where, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, but I, I've I've had uh, more of an attraction to brunettes than I do blondes. Mm-hmm. Brunettes or even, you know, like redheads but uh the brunettes yeah i've always found them more attractive so so now in the past we've talked about uh phoebe cates as being the fabulous phoebe cates mm-hmm. does jamie Gertz graduate to fabulous status hmm i don't know if i would put her in fabulous status but we put her in attractive status yes okay attractive. yes okay I can go with that. Cool. All right, so your guys' predictions for me was, uh, uh, Scott, you said Quicksilver. Mm-hmm. And I think Rose said Square Pegs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once again, Dave being the onion that he is, you were both wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the Overlord is picking the movie Mischief. Mischief, really? Mischief. There's a uh, now, you know, I've I've mentioned this movie before, mainly because of Kelly Preston, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, she's definitely another one of the '80s icons that I'd like to talk to talk about in the future. But uh, what Jamie Gertz brought to this movie is she was the uh, um, nerdy girl that kind of hung out with the main character, even though he didn't realize that he wanted, you know, that he was like attracted to that type of person. He was just, 
you know, she was nice to him. You know, think of like Winona Ryder and Lucas. Or think, you know, um, uh, my mind all of a sudden went blank. But there's other characters where, uh, you know, Watts from Some Kind of Wonderful. You know, you have mm-hmm. the main character who has this thought process in his mind as to what it is that he wants from a female companion. Uh, and in the case of Mischief, the Kelly Preston was the one that, you know, was the ideal person to be with. But uh, Jamie Gertz played Rosalie, and she mm-hmm. was just the nice, nerdy companion to the friend that, mm-hmm. you know, the, the main character wanted to be with. But they were still, you know, friends throughout. And then afterwards, he kind of understands that, you know, this girl is kind of more my speed. You know, this is kind of the girl that I should be hanging with because, you know, we've got things in common and we, you know, we can, it's okay to be nerdy and that kind of thing, even though it's back in like the 1950s, 60s time period. So, um, Jamie Gertz played this kind of character that had that, you know, nice girl kind of vibe going throughout the whole movie. Um, and I just thought she was really cool in the way she pulled it off. And then there was kind of even like a transformation kind of thing towards the end where she's no longer got her glasses on and she's dressed in a little nicer. So, uh, you know, a la Ali Sheedy from Breakfast Club, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, you know, and, you know, not necessarily a full transformation, but just something that was just, you know, I don't know, just taking care of herself a little better. Um, so, and, you know, and, and that's what I got out of that movie. So I don't know if you guys had even seen it before or remember any of that. I don't remember the movie at all. Actually. I confess I've never seen this movie. Okay. Fair enough. Which, but I'm looking at the photos and yeah, there's a shot of her on IMDb, uh, where it shows, you know, me, all the photos that they have in there mm-hmm. and she looks very attractive, very pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no idea what she did in that show, though. I, I don't know anything about it. It looks like it's from the 50s, like you said, 50s or 60s. Right. And uh, soda pop shop and yeah, the styles of the clothing. I might have to try to look this one up and see if I can find it on YouTube or something. Yeah, the bun actually be on YouTube. Plus, it's got Catherine Mary Stewart in it, too. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. I always thought yeah. she was. Uh, I liked her too, uh, which brings us back to one of my picks from the guilty pleasures, Night of the Comet. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, anyway, so, yeah. so we're going full circle there. <laughs> yep. Uh, so um, before we started talking, I actually tweeted out that we would, uh, um, you know, what's your favorite '80s moment with Jimmy Gertz? And I got a few responses. Uh, Cle- <laughs> Cleveland Indians at that sports guy. At least I think it's that sports or that sports guy. Fifty uh, says Lost Boys for sure. Dot 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 star. Now we didn't really touch on that. Um, even though mm-hmm. I figured that Scott, you would have been all over. Uh, yeah, star. I totally was on the fence with this one and it was the music like you said that brought me back into crossroads but that was a, a very very close second and i thought she was you know very attractive and sexy in in the lost boys too and i think that was part of what got uh david to follow her and try i think it was david right yeah no david no, was michael david, yeah david, uh, michael yeah Sorry, michael. yeah i confused the two i know Kiefer sutherland mm-hmm. was david right and, uh, yeah you know david's such a well uh, uh, david david's such a well-known vampire name yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like really guys come on david <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i can i can see there's a scene in in the, the Lost Boys that I specifically remember when they're when Michael was at like this concert thing going on, um, mm-hmm. when the band was playing. I still believe, and she's dancing in the background, and she gives him this look, 
and I can I can always picture that look, and it's just a very seductive and and sultry look mm -hmm. to entice him. And she, you know, she kind of brings him in under her, you know, power. And I, I guess that might be power passed on by the vampire that's partially in her. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's only part vampire. She wasn't full full fledged yet. <laughs> no. Um, but she was just very seductive and attractive in that one, and it was really a close second. I'll admit, really close. And I'm glad that we got to at least talk about it. I figure we would at least mention it. So. Oh, yeah. we, we could not end this without talking about her star. Oh, no. Her. Yeah. Uh, Corey Himes' famous line in that, <laughs> Met the mercy of your hormones, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's like, yes, you are. Yep. Let's move it. <laughs> yeah, that was a great line. So how did you feel about uh, Star as uh, uh, Rose? Um... I loved her outfit, her <laughs> hair. I mean, she definitely is, you know, pulled off very attractive. I <laughs> don't take this the wrong way, but I, I don't know. She, the dark hair, I just always, I guess, I guess it's my mom, you know, cause I have dark hair. My mother was kind of like one of those most beautiful women type of things you see when you're a kid, you know, and the first thing, you know, you notice about your mom is, you know, her hair and her eyes and all that. It just, I've always had an affinity for like black hair mm -hmm. and dark hair. Um, so that was like the perfect look for her. You know, she was very seductive and, and sultry and, and she drew, you know, Michael in effortlessly, you know, but she can also see that she was kind of torn with the whole idea of actually wanting to do it because mm -hmm. we all, why she was doing it so she did it for david so he could you know initiate him into the lost boys and she really didn't want to but it was against her will so to speak so um i think that it was wasn't a really big role for her for that movie but it spoke volumes when she was on screen you knew that there was something that you know, compelled you to want to focus on what she was saying and doing. So it wasn't as big a role as the other actors, you know, the male actors, you know, but, um, it was, it was, uh, definitely a good focal point in the movie. Yeah. I don't think she, I know she didn't have as many lines, but she definitely had as much, uh, potency in the movie. Yeah. She definitely had a role to play. It's a great way to put it. Great way to put it. That was definitely uh, some way to really take a character like Michael and suck him in, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I think, you know, she played that really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so to finish out our Twitter shoutouts, uh, TC Restani at After Hours TC says all of them exclamation <laughs> point. Uh, as far as favorite moments for. Uh, Jamie Gertz. And then uh, Juice, Julie Meow Meows at Julie underscore Meow. Oh, uh, Meow. Meow Meows, yeah. Uh, says, <laughs> I guess Twister doesn't count. No. 1990, no. Yeah. What was that? 95, I think. 94. Maybe even 94. later. Yeah. Excellent, uh, though. Yeah, and then John Blaine uh, at Wild at Fart, love that Twitter name, uh, says, uh, uh, you know, we were going back and forth really regarding mischief, um, and mainly what John Blaine was saying was that a lot of the memorable scenes was Kelly Preston, not so much Jamie Gertz. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So we were having an exchange back and forth around a very memorable scene in mischief. Um, you know, and I would not be family friendly if I went into detail. So, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay away from that. But, uh, let's just say she was, uh, Kelly Preston's ample in that movie. <laughs> 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 um, so, uh, you know, 
that is really our picks for the 1980s for Jamie Gertz. I want to bring up in 16 Candles, I believe she was the actress that cut off the blonde's hair to get her out of the door. Am I remembering that right? You know what? You're right. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, that scene just totally came back to me. You're absolutely right. I was trying to remember which scene she was in because I know she didn't play a big part in it. No. Right. No, because I honestly don't remember her in the movie. But that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, she was just basically the drunken friend at that point, and she's like, all right, I can help you, I can help you. And then, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. get big scissors, and, you know, yeah, fantastic. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I do think we may have, I may have stumbled across a kind of a, like a cult classic or... Uh, guilty pleasure with her in it. I, I don't remember. I, I think I've seen it, uh-huh. but it looks it looks like it really didn't do very well. Uh, Solar uh-huh. Babies. Okay. Oh, you stole my thunder, bro. Oh, are you serious? No, it's Is okay. I'm mention? hoping I'm hoping you had a chance to look at some of those pics. Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is this is great, man. These outfits are phenomenal. This one with Jason, one Jason Jason Patrick and Patrick. her hugging with the sweaters on. Oh my yes. gosh. Wow. That is if, so inappropriate. If that doesn't say 80s, I don't know what does. I'm sorry. That says parent planned parenthood to me. I mean, <laughs> good grief. What in the world are they doing? Oh, wow. Uh, picture i'm sorry oh, i don't gosh. care y'all can argue with me all you want on that one but that is i was just gonna God. touch on the fact that the two That's... of them were another movie together and then i started flipping through the pictures and i'm going uh what what That's, uh, uh, that's easy good stuff right there i think oh. when we post this episode we may have to uh tweet that picture out he's gonna uh, have to yeah but it's <laughs> uh I'm I think it's something that looks a little like I've seen on Kama Sutra. I don't know, but (laughs) (laughs) what's yeah? You just took words right out of my mouth. I think so too. (laughs) Um, It reminds me of a line from Turner and Hooch when Tom Hanks, um, when Hooch gets away from him and goes after, you know, the female dog that Mm -hmm. the vet had, and he's like, "Put that down." (laughs) <laughs> Seriously, that's exactly what I want to say to both of them. Get your back off! What in the world? Anyway, <laughs> that that has old and milk stone. written all over it for a new newlywed couple. That just, yeah, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh my god, those hideous those hideous pictures. Those from sweaters are great. I think yeah. I think I think Chrissy and I need to get some of those. Actually, that's all. <laughs> Is a sweater. You gotta redo that picture, though. That's all she wearing is. <laughs> I need some white jeans and a turquoise sweater. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> wow, that is so that is so bad. <laughs> yeah. But hey, I love them both. <laughs> I, well, and and who doesn't? And you know, the title of the picture could be Afterglow. I don't know. It's just Afterglow. Yeah. <laughs> In a bleak, uh, post-apocalyptic are... future ruled by the militaristic pictorette, <laughs> a group of renegade teenage orphan friends finds a legendary, miraculous orb, Bodai, Bodai. that can be only that can supposedly bring the rain back to dried up earth. Wow, what a synopsis. Yeah. And there's some kind of like roller derby going on too at the same time. I'm not sure what that's I about. want to see this movie. I, really I, I do. I, I think I think this might be homework. <laughs> the, the the first character that's listed is a guy named Grok. Grok. Yeah. Played by Richard Jordan. Grok. Grok. And then Jason Patrick is Jason. Jason. Yeah, very good. Lucas yeah, that's Hosses. a stretch. I always wondered about actors that had to play their own name, like had to have their own name as their character. Like, yeah. is, that because, is that because their attention span is so bad that they can't even get themselves outside of their own yeah. name? Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering. There's like 
so many actors out there that, you know, just There play. really are a lot that do that. <laughs> but you can see them. I mean, if Arnold could remember other names, you know, come on. But he's, like, super intelligent anyway, so I really can't pick on Arnie. But, <laughs> you know, Sylvester Stallone, if he can remember other names. <laughs> Man, Woody, on on IMDb, Solar Baby's got 4.8 out of 10 stars. Mm. Do you really want this yeah. to be homework? Come on, people. I do. <laughs> I think I do. It's got Peter DeLuise in it. He plays Tug. Oh, there you go. There's a reason to watch it just right there. There you go. Yeah. I remember that guy. I remember him, too. I like Peter DeLuise. I love Peter DeLuise. See, there's all kinds of folks. Charles Durning is in this. He plays the warden. God. It's turning. How did we miss this? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm going to be curious if the people, when we post this episode, if the people that are listening are be like, Solar Babies, how come you guys missed that? That's, you know, <laughs> yeah. classic. <laughs> yeah. So, no, be like, no, this is, this is a, this is an obscure, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is, this is obscure cult classic right here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to watch this one though. I'm definitely going to have to try to look it up. $3 on Amazon. Oof. There you go. Is it $3? Check Netflix first. Just uh, Netflix, Netflix or... Yeah, it's not on Netflix. All right. Twitter, <laughs> Twitter followers, is that a $3 movie? Let us know. Or our, our YouTube. I'm going to check YouTube. Hey, Better <laughs> Off Dead was on YouTube, and I was shocked. I was like, really? Are you people... And it wasn't blurred, and the voices weren't sped up, nothing. Good to know. Huh. Yeah, told you guys. Awesome. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we are, you know, we've, since we've been doing the Stand By Me episodes. Right. Uh, I found it on YouTube. Mm. Did I tell you that it was like slowed down to where the lines were like red? Really slowly. <laughs> it's a trip. It's really hard to listen to or watch. Was it like Sloth and Zootopia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Mabel. <laughs> I got a good one <laughs> for you. That was like the that was the best line. That was the best scene of oh. that Zootopia. Uh, yeah. It was a movie, but that was hysterical. Because that's, that's the that's the DMV, uh, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. tangent. And, oh, oh, tangent. Yeah, 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 we gotta get, alert. we gotta go back. Yeah, it's got, yeah tangent yeah. alert. Back on Jamie Gertz. It's nine oh five. And then oh. they come out and it was nighttime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so square pegs. Did any did either of you watch that? Square pegs. Square pegs. Square pegs. Square pegs. <sighs> No. I, I don't. I honestly don't think I did. I was in Germany during that time, so no. Uh, All right. Well, I think I, I think I need to include the theme song at the end of this episode, just because I think some of our, you know, the people that regularly listen to us, they like the theme songs when I can include them. So even though I don't think I watched, well, I know I didn't watch Square Pegs as much, yeah. or at all. Um, mm -hmm. I know she was the the mean girl. So that's all I really got to contribute about that. And with a name like Muffy Tepperman, you just know that's Mean Girl. That just reeks Mean oh, Girl. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Muffy. Wow. Muffy. Muffy. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, let's see. Lesson Zero. I don't think there's really anything else that we need to cover here for the 80s, did we? Um. Let's, let's just give it a chance. The dream, Dreams? Did anybody watch that show? No. Dreams. <laughs> Dave. Hey, it had John Stamos in it. I do remember her playing a few roles in The Facts of Life. Yeah. A, or a few spots. I remember a few episodes of Facts of Life with her in it. I don't remember her, you know, standing out as a character, but I can picture the whole thing. So, Boots St. Clair. What a name. Muffy and Boots, like you said earlier. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> oh, like, does her, agent, does her agent call her up and say, I got a great part for you? <laughs> it's the role of Muffy. 
Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you call me? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you got to look at that as, like, her third acting credit. I mean, could she have really been, like, discerning at that point and said, eh, I'm not going to take it unless you change the name. True. Yeah. So maybe as she got a little bit, you know, uh, later in her career, she's like, you know what? Uh, Lost Boys, if you're calling me Muffy, I'm not in. Uh, Star? Okay, I'll sign up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine Lost Boys with a character named Muffy in it? Nope. <laughs> that sounds like Twilight. Uh, yes. Um, all right, so that's our kind of 80s wrap up with Jamie Gertz. Um, you know, I think we alluded to it before, but I really loved her in Twister. I think she did a great mm-hmm. job in that movie. Yeah. So picking on her latter career, as we mention every so often, um, Loved her in that. She was just fantastic, uh, very believable as the, uh, you know, the person that was completely out of element, you mm-hmm. know, for, you know, mm-hmm. around those team of scientists. So, loved yeah. her in that. And I, I love her line in that movie. One, one of the lines mm-hmm. is uh, when she's about to ready to break up with Bill Paxton's character. It's just. Mm-hmm. In their southern accent, she says, I can't compete with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's a pretty big thing. And little, uh, she's also from Chicago. Oh, didn't know that. Yep. Uh, that's pretty just cool. noticed that. Yeah, because I watch her now, and I haven't seen it for a while. I watch her on Neighbors, and I always love it when, you know, they bring back, you know, actors and actresses from the era in which we grew up in. Mm-hmm. And put them on TV because it's just like, oh snap, this is gonna be good, and it is because you know, it's what who we remember and and what we like and and you get to see him in a whole different vein. You know, she's a mom and you know wife and all that stuff, and she's making it work and you know they live next door to aliens. But you know, it's not like that happens every day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I also I I, I'm, <laughs> I remember in the movie or in the uh, TV series still standing from the mid 2000s that was uh, yeah that was a good too. she was one of the leads in that so I thought yeah. she was good in that yeah well my favorite uh, line from her in Twister was when they were like in the scene where they're like in a, a Twister and they're like cows going through and <laughs> she goes I gotta go we got cows. We have cows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. And yeah. the fact that she's a sex therapist and, <laughs> you know, this one client just keeps calling her for advice <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. Oh, you, That's pretty funny you really just one. need to get a hold of yourself. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, he's obviously never seen Solar Babies, so. <laughs> <laughs> just look at that picture. That'll solve a yeah. lot of your- Exactly. (laughs) I'll put two and two together. (laughs) Oh wow! We went down a rabbit hole here. So what? I said we went down a rabbit hole there. (laughs) You totally went down a rabbit hole. Um, Did no one have anything to say about Quicksilver? Because I didn't see it. I did not. Matthew Modine. Uh, no, you're thinking of the... Oh, um, Kevin, no, Kevin Bacon. Yeah, that was Bacon. Sorry. Yeah, was bacon. What like was Matthew Bacon's Modine with a bike? Something with a song. can't remember. Matthew Modine uh, with a bike. He was uh, on a bike. Didn't it have that song, Breaking Away, was the was song for away? the movie? Was that the movie? Breaking. That's Breaking Away. Hold on, let me look. No, I got my IMDb in front of you. Matthew I Moody. have like four pages of IMDb open up right now. Oh, jackets. Oh, is he in... Who gets it faster? I know. Stranger Things. I know. Vision Quest. Wow. Vision, Vision Quest. Quest. You... <laughs> the Overlord wins again. <laughs> Uh, except, for, except for when he dropped the ball in the Batmobile. Hey, 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 hey. 
Yeah. <laughs> we were like in uh, all far. kinds of trouble with Scott's wife about that, man. Yeah, wow. Uh, <laughs> for those that, for our listeners, just so you know what we're talking about, apparently the 80s Favorite Cars podcast, I was supposed to proclaim my love of the Batmobile from the 1989 Batman movie, and I neglected to do that, and obviously Chrissy Scott's wife has issues with me. So, uh, uh, just so you know, a little backstory as to what's going on, what we're talking about. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I should have seen that one. I should have called that one. So you should see the look on her face when I told her you didn't pick that. <laughs> She's like, well, what? He didn't, he didn't pick the Batmobile. Wow. Like, why, why wouldn't he pick the Batmobile? Because <laughs> we all know that Dave, you know, is a huge ba- Batman fan, and and as my wife is also, a, you know, a huge Batman fan, especially of the the Michael Keaton, the original, back from that from that day. So, right, yeah, she's very surprised. I let her down. Yeah. So. All right. So I'll make, okay. I'll make sure she brings it up to you next time we're in town. Yeah. You. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> And then we can also talk about how we neglected to talk about, uh, you know, um, uh, Dirty Dancing. Oh, yes. Yeah, Don't so get me started. Oh, yeah. oh, that was strike two. That was strike all me. Uh, <laughs> all right. So anyway. We, we have a way of disappointing our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, we uh, – all right. So that's – uh, Jamie Gertz, I just really got off track there of thinking who we were talking about. So, um, mm. so yeah, so that's uh, our discussion of Jamie Gertz. Do you got final thoughts on Jamie in the 1980s? Go ahead, Scott. Um, love her. Very important person in the 80s. Icon, like we're talking about. Um, I just – I thought she fit well into the whole – you know – when we talk about the Brat Pack, there I think there's extensions of the Brat Pack that people don't include, and I think she could almost fit into that that category as part of the Brat Pack, even though it wasn't she wasn't in Breakfast Club or or well she was in Sixteen Candles, but not really in Sixteen Candles, uh, you know as we know most of the characters. But I, I really think she was you know part of that same age group of actors and actresses. And she fits right right in there with them. So I, I just love her. I think she's a great actress. Yeah, I think it almost feels like you would have had to been like a lead actor in one of the Hughes films. I mean, even though she was like you like you mentioned, she was in Sixteen Candles, but she wasn't <laughs> a lead. Uh, and I almost think that's what you needed to get that Brad Pack status. Um, but yeah, she, I mean, she fit the age group. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, you know, by proxy, if you were to look at her in the same age group, you know, as Andrew McCarthy and, uh, uh, Spader and those guys, you know, I mean, I don't know if you consider those guys part of Brad Pack, but, you know, they were definitely iconic for that time frame, and you were, you loved every one of them. I mean, they all did, you know, very notable things, and, you know, even though we didn't, you know, pick it as one of our picks, Star is very iconic, you know, for mm-hmm. Lost Boys. You know, yeah, you, right. you think Lost Boys, you think Star, uh, among others. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, that was her. That was Jamie Gertz, you know. And, you know, to me, that that's, you know, my you know what I feel is a huge contribution to the 80s for her. Um, even though we picked on, you know, our favorites as being other moments, you know, I, I just loved her in just about everything that I saw her in. So, um, Rose, what do you think? Final thoughts? Um, she's definitely, um, a major part of the eighties as an up and coming actress. Um, like you said, for, she surpassed any genre, whether it be drama, thriller, comedy, what have you, romance. Cult she did classic. it all. Yeah, cult classic, you know, you <laughs> name it. Um, I was actually just sitting here thinking of while you guys were talking. 
you know, we talk about the Brat Pack and, you know, we always have our iconic views on certain people that fit into that mold. But I like to do what, what if crossover, you know, what if say Molly Ringwald wasn't Andy and pretty in pink? Could Jamie Gertz have filled those shoes? Mm. You know, I, I think about stuff like that. So I think if she, I think she could have pulled it off, but it, uh, the seriousness of it, though, unfortunately, has to go with Molly because she's the only person, well, not only, but she obviously got the role for a reason. And if it was only to pull off those deadpan stares, you know, that made you want to go, I uh, think I'll stop talking now. <laughs> she, she, she nailed it you know mm-hmm. and i think uh, jamie has a little bit too much bubbliness and fun about her to you know really have taken that you know to the same level that it, it needed to be for the movie so, but i think she would have gave it a run for its money yeah let us hear social media credentials uh go ahead rose I am at 80s Music Girl on Twitter, 80s Music Girl on Instagram, and 80s Music Girl on Facebook. Scott? I'm Scott. I oh, mean... Uh, oh, wow. All of a sudden, I had a <laughs> well, doors moment well there. Done. It, 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 was, it, was, it was more it was like Jim Morrison. I'm Jim. And he just walks through the gate. <laughs> no, uh, at, at I on Twitter and at 80s Auto Reverse on Twitter. And then you can find me on Facebook at 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse. All right. I am Dave. I take care of our 80s Reboot accounts, and that's Facebook at facebook.com slash 80s Reboot. Twitter's at 80s Reboot. We got 80s Reboot.tumblr.com. Uh, and we also have that blog. And actually, that's being taken care of by Rose a little bit more than it is me. Even though I did throw a Christy Brinkley, or not Christy Brinkley, Christy McNichol. Wow, where was my head? <laughs> uh, Vacation? Family yeah, Truckster? Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's going Truckster <laughs> there. Uh, SouthgateMediaGroup.com slash 80s Reboot Blog. Um, so uh, that's out there. Um, and also there's another thing that's very important that we need you to do, but Rose is going to tell you about that. Yes, so everybody... Every, everybody, <laughs> Ev- everyone, marriage. everyone, <laughs> please listen, darlings. This is very <laughs> important. Now we all know that people who speak in a British accent are much more effective than those who speak in an American accent. So here goes. <laughs> we have an account. <laughs> I can't do it. We have an account. Uh, iTunes. We have our podcast on iTunes. 80s Reboot Overdrive podcast. We need reviews. You guys have been amazing. Please continue to add your reviews, comments, send us pictures of your dog. You know, we love that kind of stuff. So uh, it's iTunes. Use your iPhone. Borrow somebody else's iPhone. I really don't care. As long as you get them out there or Santa's not coming this year. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know that that's exactly a good point. You can borrow your friend's phones and their iPads or whoever. You see somebody with their nose in their smartphone. Say, hey, can I borrow it so that I can write a review for this very cool podcast? They'll let you do it. Trust me, they will. So yeah, it, Dave it, does it all the time. <laughs> hey, now you're not supposed to tell them that. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I'm just saying that that's a great way. You know, if you see that, you know, you have a friend with a phone or a smart device, say, just let me borrow that for a quick second. I just need you to sign in with iTunes and write a quick little review, post, and you're done. You know, it's like the state of Illinois. You can vote once, vote often. It'll be, you know, do that for us. So uh, five stars, we'd appreciate it. And thank you very much for reliving the 80s with us and have a good whatever. Yep. See ya. Bye. See you guys. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr. 
at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at SouthgateMediaGroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. Alright, so what are you guys' thoughts? Still uh, on for John Candy? Yeah, sure. I'm up for it. Rose? Uh, I guess. You guess? You know it's going to be an hour. I didn't know if this was going to be an hour. Yeah, I thought it would go faster. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's good. You couldn't. There's just no way. Jamie Gertz, I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm seriously going to watch Solar Babies because that looks like that might be. I really, I, I might have to go back after, and re- after really midnight have to show. That one. <laughs> That's crazy. How right. could you post a picture like that? Seriously. That's not. Oh, that Solar yeah. Babies picture? I'm totally, I'm totally tweeting that bad boy out. I saved it. <laughs> I actually emailed it to myself. Uh oh, Scott's talk. Uh, we get, are we getting messages from Scott now? <laughs> yes, we are. He's like right here. <laughs> oh, well, that works too. I like that. <laughs> Bribe my friend with beers, huh? All right, well, that's good to know. I just asked, can I borrow your phone? And then I, you know. <laughs> That's, and then I start doing it, so. Listen, I've got this whole high school thing psyched out. It all breaks down into cliques. Cliques? Yeah, you know, cliques. Little in groups of different kids. All we have to do is click with the right click, and we can finally have a social life that's worthy of us. No way. Not even with cleavage. I told you, this year we're going to be popular. Yeah? Yeah. Even if it kills us.